Greetings. This is going to be Warning, Take Heed, Part 6. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18. This is Chaplain Bob. All right, Matthew 18, verse 1. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Everybody wants to be the greatest. And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now what are, what are the attributes of little children? Well, little children want the attention of their father, right? And, well, of course, their mother, you know. And they're always wanting, you know, they, they're, they're learning. That's the thing. You know, that's, uh, so you were supposed to be converted and be like little children, learning. Verse 4. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. A small millstone's like 70 pounds. Uh, tie a 70 pound rock around your neck and then get cast into the sea and see how well you can swim. And if you hurt one of the little ones that believe in Jesus, it, it would be better. I mean, it would be better that you get a millstone tied around your neck and drowned in the sea. You know, that would be nothing compared to what you're going to face. And I'll tell you what, people, I absolutely believe Pizzagate is real. But the thing is, is when they're done with the, when they're done with the, them, they they kill them, because there's a saying, an old pirate saying, "Dead men tell no tales." Verse seven. Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man, woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. So if you're the one offending those little children, look out. There ain't going to be no mercy for you at the white throne judgment. Verse 8, Therefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee, for it is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes, rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Take heed, take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. For I say unto you that in heaven their angels, whose angels? Their angels, one of the little ones, their angels are do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. Did you know that the little ones have angels? You know, uh, I've heard it, you know, even the Catholic Church believes that the little ones have guardian angels. Well, guess what? Even, even the Catholic Church gets it right once in a while, right? Take heed that you despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven... Their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. For the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, doth he not leave the ninety and nine, and goeth into the mountains, and seeketh that which is gone astray? And if so be that he find it, 
Verily I say unto you, He rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine, which went not astray. Now concerning the sheep, in, math, uh, in Luke, Luke 15 and verse 10, Jesus said, Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And believe it or not, there's actually very famous internet preachers now that teach that sinners don't need to repent of their sin. But uh, angels, there's joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. And if we weren't supposed to repent over our sins, it would say... Uh, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one unbeliever that believes. But that's not what the verse, that's not what Jesus said here. What does Jesus say about the shepherd that goes looking for the sheep? Let's go to John chapter 10 real quick. Verse 1. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that, all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hiring fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine, as the Father knoweth me. Even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. All right, let's go back to Matthew 18, uh, verse 13. And if so be that he findeth it, the sheep that went astray, right? Verily I say unto you, he rejoiceth more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which went not astray. Even so, it is not the will of your Father which is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then... Take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, 
let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be... Oh, I'm sorry. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name. There am I in the midst of them. You see, people, the church is where two or three are gathered in his name, not on the corner of First and Main in a building. The building's not the church. The people are. So, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. That's 490 people in case you're, you know. But if you're counting, you miss the point. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. But when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him, which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. And that's that's what that's like us people. Ten thousand talents. Uh, I I don't think I would make that much in a lifetime, especially if it was silver. Verse twenty-eight. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. Uh, that's like a hundred pence, a hundred pennies. That's basically like a day, uh, hundred days pay. I mean, that is like nothing compared to what this guy owed the king. Right? So he owed the king a whole lot of money, but this guy owes him very little. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt because thou desirest me. Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had compassion, even as I had pity on thee? And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Now that's talking about those that trespass against us. We're not talking about those that trespass against the Lord. That's a whole different thing. Only he's allowed to forgive that. Let's go to uh, the book of Psalms real quick. 139. Oh, I guess verse 19. Psalms 139 and 19. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly. 
Who speaks against who? The wicked speak against the Lord wickedly. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? See, King David hated those that hated the Lord. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Wow. See, King David hated those that hated the Lord. Verse 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. In Second Chronicles chapter 19, good King Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, had helped or was helping the um, evil king Ahab of Israel. So in Second Chronicles 19, verse 1, And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to, to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, 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 the seer, and what's a seer? A seer's, uh, what was a, a prophet was called in old times. So that's a, basically a seer is a prophet. If you look at S-E-E, seer means they could, they were like seeing the future. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him. So the, prof, the seer went out to meet the king of Judah and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Think about that. Should we help the ungodly and love those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? Think about that. Christians United for uh, Israel, right? John Hagee, anybody? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord Jesus Christ? I'm sorry. Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Nevertheless, there are good things found in thee, in that thou hast taken away the groves out of the land, and has prepared thine heart to seek God. Think about that. All these people that run around loving those that hate the Lord Jesus Christ, ooh boy, God's wrath. Is God's wrath on them? I think so. What did Jesus say in Luke 19, verse 27? But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. And when we're talking about reigning, we're not talking about clouds with raindrops falling from the sky. We're talking about rulership. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. All right, this is going to be the end of the uh, this part of the Bible study. Uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. And that's Jesus, who is the Christ. In his precious name, amen.